Select Committee and come back to this House in July. I commend the Bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Raymond Ho. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Labor will support this Bill to Select Committee. We are in broad agreement with the direction of the Building Act review which was initiated under the last Labour government and I acknowledge that there has been a high degree of uh, cross-party commitment to the Building Act review. Uh, much has been said about the Building Act 19, uh, 1991 and the Building Act 2004. The 2004 Act was introduced in response to widespread weather tightness failure in the residential uh, housing sector which resulted from systemic problems which we need to look at closely uh, during the review process. It is important for us to fully understand what went wrong in all instances, not to apportion blame, but to learn valuable lessons that it will minimize the risk of a failure in the future. This means we will need to be ready to adjust our regulatory frameworks in light of uh, what we have learned. And it is important for us to take a comprehensive um, manner Take for, uh, take for example, if I may use the analogy, it is like launching a satellite. We simply cannot say, hey, let's get the satellite launched first and then sort out of the navigation system later. We cannot do that. If we, if we do, we will have consequences, uh, dire consequences. On reflection of the how building a minimum bill number three was progressed, I think it is fair for me to suggest that we should not give uh, too much a hard time to the minister. <coughs> The number three bill was introduced in November 2010, received its first reading in December 2010, referred to local government and environment uh, committee, uh, and received the select committee report three months later, which was 28th June 2011. It did not, however, it did not receive its second reading until 28th of February 2012. That was in less than two days before the licensed building practitioner scheme kicked in. So the reason that this bill was rushed through was probably that unless it was passed into law, a number of good initiatives, including New Zealand Lawn, uh, DIY tradition, will not be able to continue in its current form. Overall, that bill was passed into law in a wait, wait, and hurry, hurry fashion. That was not a good way to demonstrate competency of how the House should be run but that should be the responsibility of the, house, uh, of the leader of the House, not portfolio minister. The creation of super ministry looks interesting. From 1st of July, it will absorb the MED, DOL, MSI, and DBH. To make it sound more like a military operation, shall I add that at, 12, uh, that at 2400 hours on the 1st of July 2012, the super ministry will absorb four ministry, ministries slash agencies. It was only two years ago that the Ministry of Science and Innovation was even formed. Worse still, it was only last year that the Department of Building and Housing took over social, social housing policy. Removing social housing policy from Housing New Zealand, transferring it to the Department of Building and Housing, and now removing it from Department of Building and Housing to transfer it to somewhere else is just one example of national expensive shuffling. Although its impact has yet to be felt, some say it is a good idea, it may improve uh, business efficacy. Some say it is not a big deal, just rearranging the deck, uh, deck chair. Some say it is a bad idea. I'm sure the minister will have received an email from uh, one of the top structure engineers in this country. Uh, that's Mr. John Scarry, and I quote, this is far worse than rearranging the deck chairs. It is like burning what the few lifeboats there were on the deck of the Titanic after it hit the iceberg in order to keep the officers warm. Honestly, this is a continuation of all of the disasters that have afflicted the construction industry and especially the structure profession for decades. Long periods of neglect, then the worst changes at the worst possible time. One also has to question how a government can do this sort of a thing with regard to the Department of a Building and a Construct Building and a Housing when their own Royal Commission into the Canterbury earthquake will not report back fully till near the end of this year, close quote. 
from the briefing for the minister, uh, minister for Building and Construction released under the Official Information Act, it is estimated that social housing accounts for around one in five dwellings in New Zealand. The covering delivery model for social housing is failing to meet the needs of a growing number of households. In, a, in addition to that, the Department of Building and Housing has taken on other work concerning financial assistance package for owners of leaky homes and providing information and, and, and advice and dispute resolution services for unit title holders. And I quote, with the additional functions has come increased complexity in our work, close quote. That was what the officials said. What is the future impact it will have on the Department of Building and Housing? We don't know. What is certain is the uncertainty. Now let's have a look at the Building Amendment Bill number four. Firstly, with regard to building consent authorities, there is an unbalanced allocation of risk and responsibility in practice. To introduce a stepped risk-based system that would see consenting and inspection effort by building consent authorities more tightly focused on that building work where the greatest risk is, exists. And secondly, with regard to building practitioners, under the Building Act 2004, the Department of Building and Housing established in November 2007 the Licensed Building Practitioners Scheme, which became effective from the 1st of March this year. Qualification and competency in combination uh, with other measures such as warranty and insurance will help protect the interests of consumers. Thirdly, for better consumer protection, there are some discussions about joint and several liability model and proportionate liability model. There are pros and cons as evidenced from our Australian experience. I'll be interested in listening to other stakeholders in that regard. Also, I'm interested in the debate of uh, uh, ideas of surety. I'm interested in the ideas of a surety. The 2010 data shows that approximately 50% of new buildings are covered by the surety products available in the market. And that brings me to uh, the fourth issue in respect of the New Zealand standards. From the briefing, we note that an independent review found that the way standards are used in the system has not changed, despite the changes in legislation in 1991 and 2004. Of the over 650 building related international. Sorry international to interrupt standards. the Honourable Member. The time has come for me to leave the chair. Oh. Order. This debate is interrupted and set down for resumption next sitting day. I will resume the chair at 9 a.m. tomorrow for the extended sitting. Oh.